went down to two liters of milk. Mm. So I leave one for the family, I take one to the dairy. And the sometimes dairy. it's not really too complete. So yeah. we will take zero points. Yeah. And I remember the clerk there one day told that you just drink this milk. You don't know? don't bring this milk, just drink. <laughs> drink it. It's a joke. <laughs> Yeah. This is the this, this is, is the, the bull one, the bull that yes. serves. Ah. No, it doesn't serve. Ah. It has its purpose. What is its purpose? You see, it, it is enclosed. Huh? It is enclosed, and if you can notice, ah. it is enclosed here, and there are young heifers there. So, what's the purpose of that? The purpose of this is something we call a natural stimulation. All of them have magnets. Have magnets where? In their stomachs. So how do they put magnets? The in same way they're inseminated. In this video, we are featuring one of the youngest farmers ever to be featured in this show. Madam Naomi has managed to grow a dairy farm that has over 40 heads of cattle. Naomi is going to tell us how she started it, how she's running it, her challenges, and she's going to give us a word of inspiration. Madam Naomi, thank you so much for having me. You're looking sharp today. I like your shirts, your <laughs> thank polo you t-shirt and uh, the wing. Wing farm. Wing, wing farm. Wing farm. Yeah, it's wow. a youth group. Amazing. Uh, it's a youth group uh -huh. with very determined young farmers uh -huh. from all over Kenya, some uh -huh. in Nyandarwa, Muranga, and also some in Tambu. Amazing. Uh, it's a group of like-minded people. Yeah. Uh, venturing in different value chains. Yeah. One thing I am proud of being a member of that group is yes. the fact that there is a lot of motivation from one another. Mm -hmm. You learn from one another mm. and the level of technology innovation that you there is on another level. So I'm just proud to be part of it. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. You're truly you're truly inspirational and humbling. Yeah. Uh I didn't know you're going to accept to this interview, but I'm really appreciative of that. Thank you so much. Why wouldn't I be? <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Now, Madam Naomi, mm. how did you find yourself into dairy farming? Well, uh, I am a graduate. I uh -huh. am a graduate at the University of Nairobi. Wow, you went to University of yeah, Nairobi? Yeah, yeah. I did yeah. become. Uh -huh. And as usual, I'm a Kenyan as well. Uh -huh. There's no jobs for everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the other option was to come back home. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was home, I met, uh, when I was in campus, I met my sweetheart, my yeah. husband. Uh -huh. And when we graduated, we didn't get only the degrees, we also had a newborn coming. Wow. Uh -huh. And that hit us different because now we're independent. Mm -hmm. We are out of college. Uh -huh. We don't have jobs. Wow. And we have a baby coming. Yeah. So because of the environment where especially my husband is brought up, there is a lot of dairy farming. Mm -hmm. So I'll say dairy interest comes from the environment that I'm coming from. Yeah. The fact that we've grown knowing dairy is productive because we've seen school fees being paid with dairy. Yeah, we've yeah. Seen food come home because mm -hmm. of dairy, dairy. Uh, we thought maybe we can tap that opportunity but dairy farming is not like chicken farming mm -hmm. you can just go and buy a chicken and start raising mm -hmm. from nowhere mm -hmm. this is an animal you need to think about structure mm -hmm. you need to think about feeds mm -hmm. and the capital in it mm -hmm. to buy a heifer or a calf mm. you know mm. or a milking mother yeah so for us our best choice mm. was to go with the calves Cal oh to buy the calves yeah to buy yeah. the calves yeah. and i remember we started uh, by one calf uh -huh. uh, we that was the first saving and this saving how we come we came about was we got a family land a mm -hmm. small piece of family land mm -hmm. where we started uh, cultivation yeah. of vegetables yeah. and fruits mm -hmm. so from that we were able to have some for the household, mm -hmm. and some for savings. Mm -hmm. And I think the culture of saving started there. So we saved and we bought our first calf. She was about eight months old. Uh -huh. 
So we started with her, and then after two months, mm. we brought another one. Now, the calves that were, you were starting with, were they like uh, this breed? This is a fresh animal. Yes, thing, right? we have always yeah. done fresh and The reason why I've said mm. this area is a dairy production area, mm -hmm. and we have very quality breeds like fresh and you know yeah. fresh and is a, a producer meal producer yeah, yeah. you can produce a lot of milk uh, okay. well okay well managed mm. so availability of fresh was is in this region in these two the, regions the availability but, of the yeah, genes here yeah. yeah we yeah. not prostability most cows here 90 uh, percent uh -huh. of the cows here are fresh Okay. And this is because they they all do insemination. Yeah, yeah. And this insemination is a breed that is selected mostly by professional veterinarians yeah, and also yeah, the yeah. board of the cooperative where mm -hmm. we take the milk. Mm. So most of the cows here are of high quality. Mm. So we took a calf of fresher mm. and another one of fresher, mm. but of different farmers yeah. from within. Mm. And after maybe another two months, we had another one. So mm. we had three. Mm. And that is the only space we, we had for that moment. Yeah. The structure we had constructed was only to host four cows. But if we are going to milk, we needed to relieve one space mm. so that when they start milking, we'll have a space to milk. Okay. So these cows, remember they are young. Mm -hmm. They are not producing yet, mm -hmm. so we are still drawing money from our pockets to feed them. Yes, to invest in yeah, them. Yeah. So we were not able also to employ, mm. which I think that is the crucial point where youth shy away from dairy farming because it's tedious. Mm. We've spent with you the whole day. You've yeah, seen. yeah, I've seen. So at that moment, we were we were doing the work ourselves. Yes, yeah. So we had to go to the to the fields to cut the grass mm -hmm. and all that mm -hmm. and another smart idea which was our first lesson came in our minds that we needed to do free range since they are small they can you know cut from around, around yeah. yes yeah. and then they come in the evening give them water and mm. we've saved ourselves some energy to do something else mm. bad mistake number one because that cost us a cow wow. one calf died because they ate a poisonous flower ah. that we were not even aware it's poisonous. Ah. The two of them which were in the same uh, close by, yeah. they ate the flower. So yeah. one was critically ill and uh -huh. the other one had died. died. Oh. So the one that was critically ill, mm. we named her Lucky, but mm. she's gone, but her daughters are here. Yeah. Lucky survived and that is yeah. where the name Lucky came from. Ah. And this cow was the beginning this was the first lesson we learned in dairy farming never to just let the cow roam around. never free range yeah never free range it never helps yeah it will cut you some some time but it will end at a high cost mm. so after that we completely did zero grazing yeah now it was more tedious but there were results and then now the savings that came at that time, there was a opening because getting a number to sell at the cooperative also at that particular time was taking a bit of yeah. hassle. Yeah. So there was announcement of number issuing and we had some saving. So we opted to buy mm. a cow that is already producing milk. milk yeah. This way we will be selling some milk and we'll secure the number. Yeah. Now that is where we did our second mistake. Wow. Now, our second mistake was buying a cow that was being milked because uh, they are brokers and it's also a value chain. There yeah. are people who benefit from selling cows and mm. connecting farmers to buyers. Yeah. This guy told us they have seen a cow somewhere. The price was reasonable, it was um, in between our budget. And uh, the cow was producing good milk because we had been told it's producing 25 liters a day. Mm. And we were not as dumb, so we went to see. And we told the farmer will come, of course, in the middle of the day is when it's making sense because mm. milking hour in the morning is very early. Yeah. So we went and the milk that they milked 11 liters from that cow. Uh -huh. That is midday, that's a lot of milk. That, that is midday, yes. On uh -huh. Uh -huh. we were seeing it, yeah. you know, yeah. We were motivated and we took the cow home. 
we asked, uh, we inquired about how the cow has been feeding. Uh -huh. We have, the cow was a bit malnutrition, but we were told because she was struggling, mm -hmm. she was not able to feed it well. Yeah. So we said, wow, if you feed it well, then mm -hmm. this cow can hit 35 liters a day. <laughs> that is the, the mistake yeah. of <laughs> planning for what you don't know. Yeah. We took the cow home and started the milking. The first three days, the cow was producing five liters a day. So we were there beating our heads, and hey, something has to be wrong. Either our feeding, uh -huh. um, uh, the structure, something has to be wrong because, you know, honestly, we've seen it. We've seen it produce 11 yes. liters. And it was only during the day, and that evening produced three liters. So yeah. it makes sense. Maybe mm. we overproduce during the, the, day. the day. No, evening milk should be small. Yeah. That was our big mistake because after a week we were only producing, we were, being, we were milking five kilos a day, the whole day. Hmm. So I have a small baby, this baby expecting, and the family, we expect the same from the five liters yeah. and take some to the dairy. Yeah. So there's a moment it went and went down dropping the milk. The others have been served, but they have not yet calved. Yeah. So this one went down to two liters of milk. Mm. So I leave one for the family, I take one to the dairy. And the sometimes dairy. it's not really too complete. So yeah. we will take zero points. Yeah. And I remember the clerk there one day told that you just drink this milk. You don't know? don't bring this milk, just drink. <laughs> drink it. It's a joke. <laughs> you know? uh -huh. For me, I am a person who is discouraged first, but mm. I have a partner who is not discouraged, discouraged. first. Yeah. So she said, he said, it's okay, we will drink. We have the number and we will drink. Yeah. But this cow is going to go. I'm not keeping it. This cow. So we sold it. Yeah. We were able to maintain. Remember, we are also struggling to feed this, you know. Yeah. So we didn't buy another cow. We let this one scalp. So they calved. All of them called heifers and they produce really wow. well. Wow. So for the first time both of them would hit twenty two liters a day. How when, many how many how many cows that have bathed now? Not no, twenty two, twenty two. So I'll take like forty four liters in so, two so cows. Th that two cows now. Yes. Ah, okay. Each this has, is fair and lucky. Each each cows. has a calf heifer. Yes. How? Oh. But they are still babies, you know. Amazing. So we went with that motivated us a lot. Yeah. So we started the, the nature of saving. Mm. We saved, we saved, we saved. And then one of the family member was selling a cow that we have seen grow. It was good breed. Mm. We bought that one and it did not disappoint us. Mm. So we call her Queen. She's up there. She's the mother of Queen. And uh -huh. the cow, the heifer has never mm. birthed a male cow. Only female ones. Only heifers. Wow. So, and each year she calves. Each year she calves. Each year she calves. Mm. So she was a good investment. Mm. And that is how gradually we went and went and grew. Yeah. And our coop grew from 3 to 10 mm -hmm. to 18. Mm -hmm. So after the 18 were there, that's the only space we have there because that is not the property that I own. Yes, because first, first and foremost, they need to know that you have this. This is not, there is another uh farm. dairy farm yes. somewhere else yes. like um a few meters from here yes yeah with how many how, how many 18, are there? 18, 18, yes. 18 cows yes. there how many are here no not 18 cows yeah. 18 that are being milked but we huh? also have like four the hay the hay the heifers, yeah. four heifers that are not being milked yeah. so. And there we also have these ones. These ones are getting milk, but uh -huh. these ones are not being milked. And this is the this, this is, is the, the bull. One, the bull that yes. serves. Ah. No, it doesn't serve. Ah. It has its purpose. What is its purpose? You see, it, it is enclosed. Huh? It is enclosed. And if you can notice, ah. it is enclosed here and there are young heifers there. So what's the purpose of that? The purpose of this is something we call a natural stimulation oh. so these heifers they develop faster when there is a bull close by because ah. the urine the semen, wow. the smell it's just like a lot of ingenious things. so like it's like hormones yeah, yeah 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 so <laughs> wow he doesn't breed it, it doesn't his breed. work is to notify us when they are also 
when uh-huh. the heifers are being served for the first time, uh-huh. we tend to have a lot of silent, you know, the silent ones, they won't show any signs, uh-huh. they're not aggressive, yeah, yeah. we've not learned their behaviors yeah, yet. Yeah, yeah. So you find you losing a lot of time uh-huh. waiting for them and already they wait, they wanted to be served like four or five months ago yeah. and you didn't notice. You didn't so with him, we are able to notice. So when this bull is here mm. and you have a heifer there who mm. doesn't make any characteristic or noise, so how the, will that silent now, heifer This show? what we do, yeah. we just open, yeah. the bull will go and will sit starting to mm. charge, you know there is that romance ah, before. Okay. We will see, we will want to mount and then now we will know it. This plus the other signs, we will see the, the discharge. Yeah. We will notice now, we will start checking keenly on the things that we need to check. That is brilliant. Yeah. His name is... Uh, Kunusa. Kunusa. Yeah, for the ah. purpose of Kunusa. Kunusa is... Uh, <laughs> smelling. Smelling in Swahili. Yes. That's brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's go on. You're talking about the two. Now, that other piece of land. Yes. Yes. Now, there are the cows have been fully like there is no more space to expand to expand yes. so there was limitation of expansion yeah uh by this time with the experience and the challenges because remember we didn't have massive land so mm. mostly we depended on renting land yeah. for poda mm-hmm. we used to rent in different places for for, for, for land to grow fodder. yeah now there was excess fodder mm. there is limited space for us to expand yeah but there was some saving we had. Yeah. So we purchased a piece of land. Mm. And then after that, we did some construction. Mm-hmm. It's more modern than the other one. The other one. See? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, because it's more permanent than yeah. the other one. Yeah. So, and it carries more. It, it has a capacity of 45 cars. Ah, amazing. Yes. Amazing. So, and also there is room for expansion. For expansion, yeah. I've seen. Yes. So, those 18 cows that we had mm. and the vegetable business that we were doing, mm. we were able to save up and also get loan. Mm. How we get the loan is we sell our milk to the cooperative yeah. and to the cooperative we have a, a circle. Mm. And in this circle you're able to, like after every payment, there's some deduction, you tell the bank to deduct and yeah. buy shares for you. Yeah. So these are the guarantors you need to guarantee your loan. Mm. So we took a loan and with the other savings we had, we bought a land and it stayed for like three years. Mm. And then after that now, we saved to build the structure. Mm. We had finished paying the other loan. Yeah. And we had acquired another asset mm. that was able to change. We had another title, so we had like two titles mm-hmm. to trade to get a loan plus mm. the shares. Mm. So this time we were able to get a bigger Lauren. Yeah. And the devil is a liar. I think it was greed. Mm. Ama, it was that success you say it's just boom. Yeah. Now there I learned another lesson. Yeah. Yeah, the lesson I learned is that I will, I desire now the coop is finished. Mm. Yes. What can we do? If those ones can give us this, if we can milk this amount of milk in this. In this number. Yes. Yes. What if we added this number? What if we multiply this number? Now, since we have access to loan, yeah, we don't have a liability. Yet. Uh-huh. Why don't we, you know, increase the number? Let let let's risk. Hmm. Oh, we risked. We bought twelve. Twelve more. Uh, twelve in calves. Remember, now we are not buying a cow that is being oh, milked. Oh yeah, you learned your lesson yes. from the one that produced eleven liters. Yes. Yes. Now we are learning another lesson. Yeah. And this lesson is on heifers, yeah. in calf mm. heifers, about five to eight months. Yeah. We were buying about five to eight months. Wait, wait, what is in calf? In calf means a heifer that is pregnant yeah. in a layman's language. Ah, okay. Yes. Okay. okay. So an in calf heifer, mm. about five months, to eight months, we will mm. buy that range. Yeah. Because we are giving us a grace period of four months mm. to start repaying the loan and be stable. Yeah. Because you also need to do some you know, risk yeah. Yeah. estimation and all that, and pre- pre-budgeting, I'm a forecasting. Yeah. We bought 12 cows. We were very close with the brokers. They were our friends. Mm. They were bringing us good business. Yeah, yeah. Only did we know what we were putting in our group. So what happened? We bought the cows. They were looking well. 
to recheck everything you have been taught regularly by the cooperative on how to look mm. for good structural features mm -hmm. you know like the under the back yeah. we were looking at those yeah. now the cows come and also seeing the health of the cow if it's mm. too warm the mm. wolves all that and they all qualified first calved and died mm. so it's an accident maybe the calf was too big but since it's dead mm. now yeah, yeah. After a week, another dies. Wow. So this is two, and now we are like, what is happening? What is going on? And you know, we we are surrounded in a community, and we start guessing things, assuming things. Amani, you are too kufanya some, you know, some yeah. rituals or what? Amani, you too kuita yombewe. Amani, you know all those questions. Yeah, yeah. We let it go. After a month, another died. So this time we called the vet, hey, come and do postmortem. We need to know what's happening. Yeah, yeah. So that was the postmortem. After the postmortem, a lot of nylon papers intertwined in the intestines. Yeah. Was the reason for they the were death. dying. Yes. Mm. The other one died. It was full of ions inside. N nails. Nails. Na nail oh. Metallic, Gold, metallic, metallic ah, objects. Yes. Okay. That what they call hardware. So this time, this we didn't know what to do. Now, how can we do? How can we control this? How do we know? Yeah. So we learned at that particular time that we were buying cows from brokers and not farmers. Mm. Someone who will go somewhere get a cow that was uh, zero, zero grazing. No, it's called zero grazing. Letting them go. No. Uh, uh, just letting them roam yes. or, or giving somebody to walk the, the cows that eat around the yes. along the roads yes. yeah so uh -huh. they will eat anything and then uh -huh. they buy them at uh -huh. a cheaper price they come they inject them with vitamins inject them everything they, they need to, yeah they fatten them up they make it look really nice for you like, it's mm. really attractive mm. I don't blame them because there was no way they would have seen the stomach of the cow. Yeah. I blame myself for being naive, you know. Mm. But it's also a lesson I needed to learn. So, out of the 12, six died the first year. Mm. So the six that were left, the, the other farm, we also had others who started dying, but mm. of different reasons. Mm. Uh, them, for them, they were dying because... They had milk fever, and mostly this milk fever was a disease caused by lack of minerals that are needed for them. Yeah. We trusted a company mm. uh, to be supplying us those salts, the, mm. the minerals they need, and they failed. So it cost us. Mm. It cost us a total of nine cows. So you see, there is space there. We mm -hmm. took the ones that were here, and this was closed. Okay. Ah. Completely. So anything you see here yeah. was born here wow. and raised here. Wow. Uh -huh. Anything. And this is the first time, all these, their first time calvers. They, uh -huh. They've never been milked before. Yeah. Yeah. But the other ones, they are old. So in total, I have lost more than 18 cows. Wow. Mature cows, mm. producing cows. Mm. It has not been easy. Mm. From there, I've learned the importance of insurance yeah. mm. because along the way, I discovered that I will, there is potential of losing more. Yeah. And through the circle, we, there's an insurance. Mm. They, they come, they assess your cows, they give you the premiums to pay per year. Mm. So some of the cows were compensated depending on the nature of death. Some died because of pneumonia. Yeah. So you see that it's something like natural, mm. so they pay like 90%, mm. hardware they pay 50%, at least you don't lose everything. Mm. Another thing I learned is about the use of magnets mm -hmm. to combat the, the, the nails and the, yeah. Yeah, the iron sheet, all those metallic things that might be in the feeds. Yeah. So we, all of them, they were introduced to magnets, so all of them have magnets have magnets where in their stomachs so how do they put magnets the in same way they're inseminated oh yes so someone takes takes the glove. the magnet is a long tube uh -huh. 
just about this size ah. and it's cylindrical uh -huh. and it has some protective thing the magnet is inside and mm. there's something protecting it mm. so it doesn't harm the car so it is inserted inside wow yes. anyway that is that is audacious yeah. but then it's worth it right it is very worth it okay. i tell you mm. these are some of the things uh, i don't think a lot of farmers are aware of mm. until it hits you mm. and then mm. you'll get to appreciate the importance of that magnet yeah it doesn't cost much yeah but it really helps yeah well then because you've talked a lot about uh, acquisition mm. i wanted to ask the cost of acquiring one uh, calf how much were you buying a calf then then the first calf because it was only eight months yeah. i bought it at thirty thousand. the other one was a bit expensive because yeah. i bought it at forty thousand. Forty thousand yes. shillings so yes. that the price range ranges between forty thousand thirty thousand yes but w what about right now? that is the yeah. age that is that age uh, uh, but once a cow is more than one year yeah. and especially if it's in calf yeah uh -huh. the prices goes up to a hundred k wow but if it is in calf from five to eight months uh -huh. it shoots from 100 to 150k you have you have calves here do you sell, do you sell no those? i don't sell because you see all this oh, they, they have to feel. Yes. amazing and i oh. told you i learned what lesson i am not going to buy to, any kind somewhere yeah. I, gradual growth gradual growth. we might have a lot of money yeah. we can feel this mm. but gradual growth my friend amazing yes. you, you have to go through the learning curve yes. and grow slowly yes. when learning yes amazing yes now let's come to the feeds how do you feed all this kettle we've list some plants yeah. where we grow fodder yeah and i also have some fodder around here mm -hmm. so we we chop fodder after two and a half months uh -huh. a, a plot is uh, they cut they cut it down yeah uh, it's led to wilt for like three days mm -hmm. they come and chop it Mm -hmm. and that is the fodder we give but sometimes it's too dry yeah that the fodder is not in sufficient mm. so we supplement so the little napier grass we have mm. we add in hay bales uh, uh -huh. hay mm. and uh wheat wheat straws mm -hmm. sometimes yeah and also we have uh waste from the pineapple company Oh, Del Monte, are, the pills. Oh, Del Monte is yes. around here. Yes. Yeah, the juice company. Yes. The, the juice After company. processing the juice, uh -huh. whatever is left as waste, uh -huh. we buy it and come to feed the cow. First uh -huh. of foremost, it is really good for you when you're feeding your cow to understand it needs a content that can cause fermentation uh -huh. first. Yeah. And they easily ferment mm. these pineapple leaves. Mm. They easily they have sugar, they ferment. Mm. So they not only they they don't only use they are not only used to make the cow full mm. but they also increase the production of milk wow by a very great by 10 percent or 5 percent depending mm. on the quantity mm. another thing we did because feeds now here are very expensive mm. that mm. is one challenge we are having yeah. as farmers but we try out a lot of things and mm. each farmer has their own formula mm. for me what has worked for me is supplementing with readily available but nutritious feeds for my mm. so i don't do dairy milk i also don't buy commercial mineral salts yeah we mix our own mm -hmm. we have our own ingredients that we use remember mm -hmm. i told you the lesson i learned yeah so we've worked closely with our vets mm. who has taught us what to 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 buy in terms of minerals what to check in mm. so we make our own salts yeah Instead of dairy meal, we buy maize chum. Yeah. And uh, as farmers now here, within you, you, you come up like 10 farmers. Mm. You take a trailer. Mm. It's called a trailer, the big lorry. Yeah, the big lorry. Trailer. Yeah, we, yeah, we take it. We take maize jam from Uganda. It's a bit cheap. Oh, I, and we I come and maize share. is cheap in yes. Uganda. Yeah. Yes. We come and share. Ah. So you will find buying there, mm. you're saving more than 500 shillings mm. if you're mm. buying from an agrovet from within. Mm. So that is one of the advantages we have 
being in an area where dairy production is at its highest mm. because also accessibility of some of these things there is like for us when we are buying the pineapple leaves there's a lorry always, sometimes in Gidongori you'll find a lorry selling mm. you buy your pickup you buy your bucket you buy your drum and you leave there is also something we call machicha that is uh, brewery's waste yeah and it's very high in protein because it's made from sorghum and barley yeah so we buy it from within local distributors mm -hmm. and this saves us a lot when it comes to cost of dairy milk mm. because we have that protein we add in the maize jam and mm. maybe buy pollen ah. and then we also use chicken manure okay so you'll find we use a ratio of maybe three maize jam two pollen and one chicken manure mm. and also now depending on the production of the cow that mm. is where we play the game with the machicha and yeah. the pineapple. Ah. So if you're high yield, you get more feeds, mm. those two. If you don't meet the expectation or you, there are those we call dry. These are cows that are, have been milked, mm. but they are not milked anymore, maybe in their seventh or from six months when they're in cal. Mm. They are not getting milk in, we call them dry until they give birth. Ah. So this cow, you don't give them feeds that will you know, uh, initiate your lactation hormones yeah, yeah, so yeah. that they are they stop producing milk. And this is very important because if you continue feeding this cow, the feeds that you're feeding the milking cow, mm. it, may, it has chances of brain mastitis. Mm. How? Because it's producing milk, uh -huh. you're not milking it. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. So okay. it causes that is one of the causes we have for mastitis. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. You may lose teeth mm -hmm. because of that. And me, I have high producers cow, and I can tell you for a fact I have three cows that mm. I milk only three teeth. Oh. Okay. And this is because of the same. Mm. They are high producers, and we want we don't want them to go back. We want to keep them nourished so that maybe mm. they can add more kilos. Mm. We don't give them time to dry up. Mm. And in turn, they continue producing milk, milk, mm. till they have mastitis because they are not milk, oh. getting milk. Oh. Sometimes you see a cow, it is seven months pregnant, is producing 15 liters a day, mm. or 10 mm. liters a day. Mm. You still breed as a woman, hey, this is a lot to just do away with. Yeah. I will do the last three weeks. Yeah. Now, when you take the milk, because now the hormones in the body have started saving some nutrients for the cows mm. when you take that milk and mix with the milk you take to the dairy mm. there is a quality check mark yeah, there yeah, yeah. it will check and return your milk because of that one cow ah. so you lose like 400 liters because of greed of five liters yeah now talking of milk mm. i've seen milk is plenty in this farm yes yeah. You're milking three days a day, uh, three, three times, times a, a day. day. Yeah. yeah, everybody's like, cha, cha, Every cha, time. cha. it's really satisfying to watch. Okay, how many liters of milk does your dairy, these two dairy farms, produce in a day? So, I will say, in average, yeah, an average, in exactly. average, I'll say about 380 to 400 wow. because. There is a lot of factors that affect that. Yeah. There is the issue of dry, there is an issue of weather, yeah. climate, mm. all those feeds. Mm. So an average of 400, 380 to 400, 400. liters. Yes. Let's say 400 liters. How much is a liter of milk now? Can, it depends can. where you're selling, because uh -huh. for me, I'm selling at the cooperative and uh -huh. they're buying at 49 shillings. 49 shillings. Mm. So let's put it at 50. Yeah. 50 shillings. Yeah. No, not 50. Yeah. Yeah, let's say 49, because 40... it's really 49. <laughs> <laughs> that one shilling is what? a lot. Wow. 49 times 400 liters of milk. Wow. Yes. That so, is something. So do the cost of feet. Uh -huh. I think the question was, yeah. what is the cost of production? Cost of production. Yes. Wow. Because you might do the mathematics and you go plumbastic, but the cost of production is everything. Okay, now let's come back to cost of production. Mm. How much? How uh, how much in shillings does one cow eat? No, I will say the cost of producing a liter of milk is uh -huh. about twenty-eight. In in a day. Yes. Twenty-eight shillings. Twenty-eight shillings in a day. Yes. Wow. So selling it at forty-nine, you are eating about eleven. Eleven shillings. Yes. 
So that is 11 times 400 shillings. Yes. How much is that? I don't know. 11 times 400 shillings. <laughs> Do the so. math. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But I'm sure it's good money. Yeah. It's not it's, bad. It's good money. Yeah. What about manure? I've seen there's a lot of manure. And uh, I know manure has a lot of benefits, right? So walk us down uh, the path of how you use this manure. Something I forgot to tell you. Yeah. I told you we started with health culture and fruits, right? Uh -huh. One challenge we had mm. was buying manure. Manure. <laughs> wow. We would buy, we would spend a lot of money buying manure. Manure. Uh -huh. So we treasure manure. Mm -hmm. For me personally, I treasure manure. Manure. One, I use as a source of energy. Mm -hmm. I cook with biogas. Yeah, I've seen it. Yes. Yeah. So I use the biogas. Uh -huh. The slurry yeah. is what I use to feed my vegetables. Uh -huh. So the cost of fertilizer is gone. Yeah. The manure that is not that is there there is another section you saw the manure that is just mm -hmm. dumped somewhere. Mm -hmm. We let it decompose there, drain, mm -hmm. and that is what we transport transport to the Napier mm -hmm. grass farm. Mm -hmm. Because we need to achieve this height of grass mm -hmm. at this particular time. So mm -hmm. manure is very important but, in your in your fodder yeah, fields. Yeah for you not to go back and buy for that. Mm. So a lot of our manure goes to the fields. Mm. So you, you said you need to achieve a certain height of uh, your Nepia grass. grass. Yes. Why is that so? As I said, land here is scarce. Mm. The little opportunity I have, I'm going to make the... To maximize. Ma yeah, I'm yeah. going to maximize yeah. it. Brilliant. I don't have a big land and this, this cows need to eat. Yeah, exactly. So what we do, mm. we plant Nepia grass, mm. And then sure, for me, I, I prefer when it's long. It's not what is recommended, mm -hmm. but I like it when it's very tall mm -hmm. because that way I have more fodder. Mm -hmm. I will supplement the nutrients otherwise. Yeah. I need the cows full first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the, the right recommended is about a meter and a half, mm -hmm. two meters. Then you yeah. chop it. That they say it has more mm -hmm. production. Mm -hmm. If you have a big land, you will use that. But for me, I opted for that one because mm -hmm. of to increase the, 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 the quantity of the yeah, food. Yeah. Yes. Moving forward, mm. in the next 10 years, mm. where do you see yourself? I see myself as a big farmer, uh -huh. owning some ranch. Uh -huh. But I'm, I'm going to still be a farmer. Uh -huh. yes. Owning a ranch? Maybe a ranch or yeah. some big farm or some uh -huh. big, you know. But it has to be production of food production amazing yes amazing yeah. what about would you still be doing dairy i will not stop doing dairy what about a value addition now do you think you're going to i don't think for me yeah. i think for people and that is a niche that i think a lot of youths need to tap in yeah for me i don't think i have an advantage of trying to value add yeah considering the cooperative is here ah. it's massive yeah it's big there individuals they are private company mm -hmm. trying to do the same but so they are struggling mm -hmm. so i don't want to go through that uh -huh. line of doing the value addition for now mm -hmm. i'd rather work and sell the milk the dairy. milk but what i will do on my level mm -hmm. is improve my breeds mm -hmm. i want mm -hmm. to achieve those liters those i see on tv 60 liters per cow yeah if they can get i also can get so yeah. i'm really working with a close associate and partners mm. and vets mm. our vet is amazing mm. he really teaches us about the new breeds he have introduced there is a new breed that they're introducing it's called the red freshen i mm. think you've seen one of them yeah so that is the niche i want yeah. to capitalize on i want to improve my breeds, yeah, breeds. yes That's i brilliant. want to improve the breed yeah. so that i can have quality milk and quantity yeah. yes amazing yeah now having been in this sector and uh, having had your own fair share of uh, challenges right what are the key just to summarize the most important maybe the biggest okay what are these challenges that anybody who would be starting the same thing today or tomorrow would expect and how would they uh, guard from that I, I think one first is the capital, capital. because 
you you're saying mostly for the youth mm. it is the capital mm. and capital is not only the money mm -hmm. we're talking about the space yeah. the land the resources the, cows, yes. yeah, the resources that yeah. you need so you need that land you need the capital to buy the cows mm. and now the real challenge that is challenge number one mm. if you can beat that you go to challenge number two breed mm. selection I have heard a lot of people ask, I'm in Mar and I am in Kitale, mm. how do I get good breeds? Yeah. I have dealt with people from your region, you have conned me. I'll tell people, I have also been conned. Mm. But you learn. you learn. But the best person to sell you something is a farmer, mm. not a broker. So, Go uh -huh. to a farm, uh -huh. talk to a farmer, mm -hmm. and it's not a setup. You've seen, you've seen it's natural. Yeah, exactly. Go to a farmer and tell them you want to buy and negotiate from there. Another thing, some people would want to come and start earning the money because you just want to come and start milking. Mm -hmm. My friend, give yourself time to learn. Mm -hmm. Okay? Give yourself time. There is a reason why I got that cow that was of bad quality. Mm -hmm. There was a reason why. Mm -hmm. Because I needed to first learn the two on how to take care of them properly to get to achieve the liters that I was desiring from this one yeah. car. Okay? Yeah. So you need to grow gradually, mm. gradually. And it's a lesson you need to learn pole pole. You don't mm. hurry things. Alternatively, if you're blessed and you, you have resources and you want to do big, most of the challenge I have seen with people is the management. Mm. Because management is also very key. Mm. I spend my days here all day. Mm. Sunday I rest with the family, but it's like an age to just that I, I, I do early and I go back yeah, late, yeah. but it's a commitment. If you can't commit to it, hire a professional who has done things like an husband, who mm. is aware of what to do. Yeah. Someone you can question why is this going this and this. Someone mm. you're expecting results from. Mm. Because you can still do that and not be around. Yeah. But for that case, you need to hire someone because management is key. Mm. If you lose on management, it will never work. Wow. Yeah. There is disease. It is catastrophic because you might lose the whole heart. Mm. There are diseases here in this region. The same way there is an advantage of food market. Yeah. The disadvantage is there is close it's enclosed area that there are many cows and viruses spread is very fast mm -hmm. can i tell you for a fact they have to be vaccinated every year i think for the lumpy skins mm. you need to understand the, the condition of the cow before they come to vaccinate because mm. something like when the cow is like five months pregnant and below it can be vaccinated and have a miscarriage ah, okay so those are the things you need to be aware of mm. Ah, yeah. There is a vaccination for things like foot and mouth. Foot mm. and mouth kills cows here. Wow. I know of a coop that had over 60 mm. and all of them died. Mm. It is disastrous. Mm. The cow turned fall off. Mm. It is really yeah. And it's a viral disease. How can it get to your farm? The same way you've come. Yeah. You come with it without knowing. Mm. I can be carrying, you see my neighbor is too long and I used to cut too. To be transported. Yes, when it's sweeping through the road, it carries the virus and come. Mm. So it is very good to disinfect your farm, mm. to know how you're carrying your neighbor, to know who is accessing the farm. And this is part of the management. Mm. There's another disease that is caused by management and mostly it's the, the mastitis. Mm. The mastitis could be because of cleanliness, mm. the breed of the cow mm. also affects, and also the stage at which you stop. If you, the reason why me, I'm not using machines, I wonder why you've not asked mm. that, but mostly machines are the cause of mm. mastitis from the few farmers i've had talk yeah. about the machines yeah. it's a good investment because it's fast mm. but at the end of the day you still have, need an employee to come and finish up the milk because oh, the machine the is not able to, to finish the milk. yes yeah. and if you leave some milk the cow will get sick yeah also the management when you're cleaning your under before you milk that can spread the mastitis. Mm. So all that, where the cow is sleeping can cause mastitis. mastitis. So you need proper cleaning of your poop. Mm. Here we use mostly things like smagadi or mm. soda. Mm. We use it to clean the poop. It's mm. really, uh, it's a good uh, 
disinfectant for mm. the farm, mm. maybe farm. Mm. The others who use other companies, but for me, I prefer using that. Yeah. yeah. Another disease could be something like pneumonia, mm. milk fever. Milk fever kills very fast. Mm. And milk fever is mostly caused because of minerals. Maybe yeah. you've milked the cow so much, yeah. you're not giving it the required minerals. Mm. It just buzz, refuse to stand, mm. refuse, it's unable to, you know, stand. Mm. And that's a loss. Ah. Pneumonia can be caused by climate change mm -hmm. and also mostly by where you've constructed the structure. Mm. Because if it's under a big shed, it's always cold. Mm. That cow will get sick. So yeah. which somewhere they would love some spaces here yeah. for them to, to get the sunlight. Yeah. The sunlight is very important. Yeah. Amazing. Mm. Amazing. Now uh I love asking this question. If uh because maybe there's someone watching us today who is thinking of starting a farm tomorrow, um any other day and they don't have anything. With themselves okay um how would they start so i'm going to ask you this question mm. if you woke up one morning okay and you found that all these farms all the cattle have been taken away and then your reputation has been taken away you're not able to connect 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 get a get a cow get this 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 you're not uh you're not you're not proximal to a cooperative what would you do and you want to start a dairy farm what would you do to get to this exact point the fastest time possible yes we've talked about uh appreciating slow growth but then there's this guy who is like no 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 for me to survive at least i must meet a certain threshold and produce milk this amount of milk for me to sustain myself so what would you do different what I will do different yeah. if I was to start a dairy cow with nothing. Nothing. Today you woke up. Nobody knows you. I'll first find something because you can't yeah. start with nothing. <laughs> I'll, first, I'll first find something to, to do. start with. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And I will save up to buy a good calf. Uh -huh. I might start with a calf. Uh -huh. I may start with a heifer. Uh -huh. Depending on the savings that I have. Yeah. I want people to know that the, the culture of saving. Mm is important and people think saving 500 1000 10000 is real saving mm. saving 50 shilling is real saving ah. with this time you as a youth you as a person somewhere stuck and you really want to do this mm. find something that you're able to save some money yeah and start where you are able to start because yeah. once you've started something mm. you are able to learn as you grow yeah okay mm. and it gives you motivation mm. A dream that you've already started working on is not as a dream as it's not even written. Mm. You know? mm. So for me, I would find something that mm -hmm. will give me a bit of savings. Uh -huh. And when I say something, even if it is in the value of dairy, there is a lot of things to do. Mm. For example, for me, there are people who produce milk. Yeah. And that milk comes back mm. at, after quality control. Mm. When it comes back, doesn't mean that mal that milk is bad. Mm. It just milk means that it's not per quality of processing. The standard. Yes, but the standard. Yeah. Maybe yeah. if it kept for long, mm. it will go bad. Yeah. They sell it at a throwaway price. Mm. Do you know this? The the can mm. you see here is mm. fifty liters. Yeah. It might cost two thousand for quality milk, mm. but bad milk can cost up to two hundred shillings. Wow that milk learn how to make cheese that yeah. milk is really good to make cheese mm. if you're not making cheese extract butter from it mm. you know make soaps with the, 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 the butter you've got and there's so much you can start doing wow, wow. soap is made from butter there are quality soaps you know you need uh, a source of mafuta what did you call mafuta oil, uh, oil yeah. yes. yes you need the yes. source of oil wow. to, to do soap mm. If they're selling, of course, it's very expensive, yeah, my friend. Yeah, expensive. If you can get this and it gives you at a two liters, at yeah. a three liters yeah. of oil yeah. and mix up, how much will you get from that? Yeah. So just be innovative. The DIYs, doing cheese is very, if you have milk and you have vinegar, you have cheese. And wow. who doesn't eat cheese? Mm. You see? Yeah. So 
you don't have to have a cow first yeah. so that you can enjoy from the dairy farm. Yeah, yeah. There are people who are selling seeds for nipia grass. You, yeah. you, you found me chopping. Nipia grass. It's yeah. a market. Go mm. buy nipia grass, mm. cut them, go get markets. The people who are looking for it. Mm. Okay? So if I was to be stripped of everything, mm. but I still know there is cow, yeah. I hope they are not stripping up my knowledge. No, 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 no. I will do that. Wow. I will bring raw materials to this dairy farm. Mm. I will create transport for them because there are people who don't have the transport to take their milk to the market. Mm. They want manure to take somewhere. There are mm. people who are looking for manure. There are people who don't know where to take their manure. Mm. It's just create a link, get some money, save, get your cows. Mm. Yes. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. That's truly amazing. Now, you you have a consultancy uh business or hustle right yeah because uh for you to do this farming for quite some time you've accrued uh some valuable knowledge yeah. right yeah and uh you're offering consultancy services yes so i want you to look into that camera because a lot of people are watching us around the world Tell them something, okay? And on top of that, connect them to your business and uh, how much you're charging for you to be able to give them that knowledge or advice. Okay. Yes. Uh, for anyone who would want to venture in dairy farming, I'll tell you the value chain is very broad. It has a lot of opportunities that are yet to be tapped. Here we have an advantage because they have available market, but outside Gedongori, I know people are struggling with the market. And milk is a commodity that is required in every household, so the market is easily, it's easy to get. Anyone can venture into this business. It has good profits. It is, uh, it is able to grow very fast, so the growth is very rapid if you want to. And I am training you on how to venture in agribusiness while doing dairy or any 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 line of this value chain that you would want to venture in. I motivate you. I, I, I also invite you to the farm. You come spend a day with us. See how we are doing. Visit another farm, doing something different from what I'm doing. Get exposed to small scale farmers, middle scale farmers and large scale farmers. And I think Mostly, the best farmer learns from a farmer. Yeah. I'm a farmer and I'm knowledgeable enough to help you, you know, or mentor you achieve this dream. So reach me, my contact. Mm -hmm. you'll, you'll be given my contact. Yeah. And we can talk. I charge $20 for the training. We do virtual consultation if you are far but if you want to do the consultation at the farm you just book an appointment and we'll be able to tell you on appropriate day you come and we learn together let's farm because just saying corporate jobs are the only jobs that are you know they can make you achieve dreams i tend to conquer that because i have seen i have i am a living testimony that Agribusiness can take you places. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. That is wonderful. Thank you so much for having us yeah. today, for creating this time. You're really busy. I've seen uh, the clans you're having, yeah. your vegetables, how you're rushing up and down until I was like, wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, we, we are special. Yeah. There are people out here who are willing to do this inspirational job just to get you up on your feet to do your own thing to succeed and prosper yeah amazing right so if you watch this video up on this up until this point and you've liked it remember to subscribe give me give me a thumbs up leave a comment so that we know what you're thinking about till the next one a piece. Adios.